So hey, what we're going to do today is we're going to put together a streeper. And again, I showed it a few minutes ago on the live show on the uh, Facebook, on, fa on my Facebook page. Uh, we're going to tie this up right here. And what we're going to use <clears throat> are these articulated shanks that I made right here. I've already got this section kind of tied off to kind of help uh, you know, cut down on the amount of time it takes to put this together in this video. Uh, but we have the articulated shank that I made with um, these tools right here. It's called a one-step looper. And it, I've got two different sizes. I got a uh, three millimeter looper and I got a 1.5 millimeter looper. And what the, what the 1.5 does is it gives me the eye to put my line through and the uh, three millimeter on the back side is what allows the hook to move on the back side with it, without getting fouled up. It goes up and down, back and forth. Material will also help hold, hold that into place, but it still gives, gives its movement, which is uh, pretty awesome. I make these, and this is a um, 030 stainless steel um, wire that they use for welding. And the uh, hook that I'm using is a Gamagatsu size 2 B10S. Um, I, I might go to some larger hooks on some of these uh, in, in, in the future because I really kind of think just by the, the uh, style of this fly, you can almost use any size, um, any size hook that you want. Uh, well, I wouldn't go any smaller on this size of a fly. I wouldn't go any smaller than the um, 2. Um, on the B10S. So we'll go ahead and, and get this thing all put together. It doesn't take really that long to put one of these together. Um, now look, let me go back here and go over the, um, the body materials. This is going to be the tail. It's an extra large cactus hackle. It's in, pure, it's in pearl. And then the body will be this large uh, cactus hackle. And it's uh, a little smaller on these strands here. And then actually on the back side tail, I'm using these um, silicone skirts that are used on spinner baits for uh, your spin casters and bait casters. Uh, this stuff here is pretty nice. It's got the metal flakes inside of it. It's translucent and it's got a couple of different tones which help the, uh, the look of the fly. I, for us, for the, for, the, for the fishermen anyway, I, I'm not too sure how important it is to the, to the uh, fish. But we'll go ahead and and run some uh, thread on here. And you can come back to just about the um, to just about the bend or at the bend. Um, the material and the way this fly is tied, it, it's not <clears throat> it's not super critical. Uh, it, it's not. It, the main thing for all of this is just to have fun. Just come up with your own creation, you know, take this and, and uh, you know, expand on it. You can certainly do that and have a blast out on the water when you catch a fish on your own, on your own fly. And what I'm trying to do here is grab two of the gray <clears throat> strands and two of the, um, the white ones. There I go. And then cut those bad boys. And then we'll be done with that. And then just um, run the uh, silicone legs strands on the back there. I wouldn't even really worry about the the evening up the exact lengths. I mean, a little bit of uh, you know different lengths is uh, it, to me is a good thing. Bring it up onto your hook, and then just put a little bit of a dam in front, and then start grabbing it. And then find the uh, pull, pull the strands back, not too hard, but just pull them back enough to uh, to get them to line up with the shank along here, and to be evenly on both sides and, and the top. And then just wrap kind of tight in the front, and then as you go towards the back, kind of loosen up the wraps just a little bit, not a whole lot, like that. And yeah, I use a lot of thread on these. 
And that's why I like this 3-aught, um, I use this 3-aught uh, thread. It's a braided thread. And uh, a lot of people don't like, you know, round braided threads be because they're tying, um, you know, size 14, 20, 24 flies. And if I was going to be tying that small of a fly, I would use the uh, thinner, stronger, actually this is a very strong thread. You, you can do uh, deer hair with these, but it doesn't lay flat, but it builds up a dam really fast. And that's kind of what we're wanting to do here. So what we're gonna to wanna to do now is take some of this uh, extra large uh, cactus hackle here, and we're gonna tie it on just in front of the uh, silicone legs that we put down, the silicone strands that we put down on the hook there. So I'll grab it about, I'm gonna grab it about right in here and come back onto the, the uh, strand that has the material locked in, like so. And then as I wrap it, I'm going to pull the material back wrap, pull the material back, and then pinch so that, it so that it doesn't unravel on me. I'm pinching right with, with my left hand and wrapping with my right. Pull the material back, wrap again, pull the material back, and wrap again. If you do that, what you're going to end up with is a real nice looking tail on the back side of your hook around that bend. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to lock this in so I'm going to wrap it around here a couple times and then pull it back again build that little dam up in front of it and kind of climb start climbing onto the material just a little bit just like that and I'm using this uh, extra long rip right by uh, bobbin because it allows me to to allow you to uh, see a little bit closer back inside there. It is a really good long reach tool for you know large um, large streamers and that sort of thing. If you're tying you know pike or musky flies. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm not going to lay down any kind of an underbody. I'm just going to use my thread to uh, take the collaring of that hook away. And now I'm ready to tie in the large cactus hackle that has the shorter strands. And what we're going to do, I don't have any already cut, so I'll pull it out here. I kind of like doing it this way because that, that way I don't have to be reaching to try and find an end. I, if I have the end on, on there, I'm always able to find it real fast. That's just a real quick tip. So anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll tie on the, uh, the body of the fly using this large uh, cactus hackle. This stuff is awesome. And then I tie these just about the same way. Now you can see right there, well, I'm not too sure. Can you see it better here? Yeah, actually you can see it pretty good here. The, you can see the fibers shooting towards the front here. So what I'm wanting to do is the same, <clears throat> same thing I did with the tail as I'm going to do on the body, is I pull it back and, and wrap. Pull it back and wrap. Pull it back and wrap until I get down that little uh, slope there of that dam that I built up on the hook. Back. Just like that. And yes, I'm putting a lot of material on here because uh, it's going to help the um, <clears throat> it's going to help the tail drop slower in the water with the more material that you have on it. Okay, there's that, and let's go to this one here. And then I like wrapping the thread around the material to grab it really nice and tight, and pull it back just like that, and then climb again back up on top of the material and build yourself a nice little head right there, just, just like that. OK. 
Okay. <clears throat> and that should be good and then I'll use I, I use this stuff right here on just about everything I know you can use regular head cement but I'm um, <clears throat> I'm not tying little dinky flies so and it doesn't take a whole lot for this just put a little bit on and then kind of spread it around with the tip of the nozzle just like that and then I'll I, I made these things up to put over my cap to help keep it from uh, drying out on me. <clears throat> so there's that, and then we'll go ahead and hit it with light to harden the head up. To be quite honest with you, that right there, <clears throat> that right there is ready to fish, actually. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, if you want, you can just, you, I mean, you can absolutely just fish that right there. I really like the way the large tail is, and that is out of proportion to the body down here, just using it this way, but we're going to be putting the um, articulated shank on this one, and then dropping it into the hook, or into my vise. Just like so, and we'll put it in this little holder here. <clears throat> and now what we want to do is we want to lock this down right here onto this part of the shank. So I'll get it started. And again, I like to, that's what kind of helps lock it in there so it doesn't slide around on me or slip out. Bring that board down there. Okay, so now what I want to do is kind of give a marker <clears throat> of where my foam is going to stop so that I know how far I need to come forward with my material. So I put that on there and I put a little, little marker on there, like so. That way I know that I'm going to come back to that point right there. Once I have it covered up, I'm good to go. Now, there is one other piece of material that I like to use, and that's this uh, uh, micro chenille. It's uh, seriously micro. And the reason why I like using this stuff, stuff is because when I wrap it onto the hook here, all these little super fine fibers, when I put the super glue on and slide the plug onto the, um, onto the shank, this stuff right here is going to be saturated with the super glue and it will help just really uh, really lock lock this thing on now <clears throat> when you first put it on it uh, you want to get it into position and just leave it set there to give the um, the super glue a chance to set up um, so we'll go ahead and tie a little bit of this stuff on here and it I'm not going to tie it in so it's real tight um, and if you if you watch what I did there, I mean, this is underbody to foam, so it's not all that important what this looks like underneath here, and that's why once I had this tied in, I can just go with real long wide wraps to get my thread back up to the front again. Okay, so we'll go ahead and wrap that on now, and again we don't have to worry about wrapping wrapped. Uh, having the wraps touch each other, we can go back kind of wide towards the front. And the only thing that we're doing is, and then we've got this little gap right here where the two pieces of shank mixed, mixed up or matched up. Oops, that ain't going to hurt anything, believe it or not. Um, 
is to fill that gap in and then continue forward. And again, I like to wrap the uh, material a couple times with the uh, hook just like it did there. And cut it, that's too short to keep. And then what I'm gonna do is run the thread back again to the front and again, when I do this, I'm doing it with long, just to get it back there so the thread doesn't cover up all these little pointy pieces of uh, material. Cause that, I want that roughness there, I want the roughness there to help that super glue catch, capture and hold the uh, plug into place. So now what we're gonna wanna do is Get some more of this extra large, and I thought I had a piece on here. I guess I have to cut some more. Is to grab this uh, extra large cactus hackle. Now, what this thing serves to do is give you a little bit of a transition between the um, the plug and the body of the, your fly right here. So we'll go ahead and tie that on. Again, um, I, I, I have a, let's see if we can see it in this video. I have the uh, string that's holding the uh, material on and I have it go past a pretty good little way so that I can capture it and go forward on it and come back. And that way it captures that, uh, that material nicely in there. And I'll bring this thing all the way back to where the where that eye um, starts and then just give it a couple wraps and then you're going to have a lot of build up here <clears throat> same thing just pull it back And what we're doing is we're going to bring this this wrap all the way up to where we have this micro chenille. <clears throat> and then once we get to that point there, what I want to do is put some wraps on here so that I have this sticking out this way. And the reason why I want that, and I'm going to throw a few wraps around here so I can capture it really nice and tight. The reason why I want that is so when I put the plug on, it's going to push that material back and it's going to have some of the material sticking up, uh, you know, really nice right behind the back of this plug and gives it that smoother transition. That, that's why I do that. Um, so we'll go ahead and try and get the tying thread between these strands here so that I don't, so that I don't lose that splay of material towards the front and take those wide turns again to the front. And this is not, you don't, you know, you can tie it off however you want. It doesn't have to be perfect and you can tie it, you can cut it off way up here. Why? Because we're gonna be putting super glue on here <clears throat> to, um, to hold the, the, the plug on. So now what I wanna do <clears throat> is the plug needs to be, to have holes. Now you can, you can slice it with an X-Acto knife, but I, I don't really like doing that because it's, then it's got a, uh, um, an opening that could work its, its way loose <clears throat> when, you're, when you're fishing it. Um, I like the hole that goes around these you know, microfibers on the micro chenille because it will hold it in place and it grabs the foam all the way around the inside diameter of the plug. So we'll go ahead and actually, before I put my super glue on, what I want to do is I take a, <clears throat> a torch and I'm going to heat up the end of a bodkin. And you don't need to get it real hot, but you do want it to, you want the flame, you don't need the uh, bodkin to turn orange, you need the uh, flame. Once you see the flame turning orange, and I don't know if you can see it in the video or not, but you want the uh, flame to turn orange, not the actual bodkin itself. So 
now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this plug lined up on this uh, ruler of a combination square because I like it because it's got this groove in here that allows my botkin to, get to go right in and out the other side at the exact same location right here as it is on the back back there. That hole goes straight down through here. And the reason why I like it as close to the bottom as possible and not up towards the middle here somewhere is because all of this weight on this thing here is going to cause the, if, if my fly lands like, let's see if we can get it on here. Okay, so if my fly lands like this on the water, the weight of the hook and the material on the hook and the shank is going to take this bob bodkin or uh, plug. It's going to take it and turn it around so that it rides straight up, perfect for you every time. You'll never have a fly land on its top and and stay there. It's going to land and and turn just because of the weight of the hook. It's going to the hook is going to pull it around into place. Okay, so now what we want to do since we have that. <clears throat> that hole in there is I might go ahead and have to resize that hole because it looks a little bit small. So let's heat this back up again. It doesn't, you don't want it to be too small or you're going to distort your plug when you go to try and put it on. So you want to, you want a pretty decent hole in there. You got to remember you got all that material on the shank there to help you grab it. And that material is quite a bit larger than the uh, than the uh, bodkin however uh, the foam stretches okay so what I might do is put that in there and and oversize it a little bit that way when it goes on there we go that's in here just I, I don't want to put a lot of glue here I want to keep it up towards the front, and then when I put the uh, again, when I put the uh, plug on, this super glue will get pushed pushed back. Now you do have some work time, believe it or not, on the super glue when you put it on here. Super glue is wet. There's no pressure on the glue. This CA glue is cured when you actually put pressure to it. So we still have the we still have this flaying here, and we're going to go ahead and put this put this on. You're, you're probably going to have, you might end up with a little bit of a drip on your table, so you might want to put a little cloth down there or something. I've got glass on mine, so it clean, it, mine cleans up really easy. So we'll go ahead and put it on there. And to make sure that it gets it really good, I'm going to push it on. Now look at that right there. See how that, see how that pushed it back and it gave that a, a nice uh, profile from the, this hard, end of the foam um, so that you don't have to worry about it tapering down like you do on the um, on foam bodies you buy like the double barrels and and I've got double barrels I, I like them I've, there's places for them I use the double barrel poppers more on a, more on lakes than I will my my creeks this this here is my creek fly creek and creek and river smallmouth fly um, I use flies for the particular fish that I'm going after. I have used this one in, in lakes. If I see <clears throat> if I see shad running the top, you'll see, I mean, if you've ever been on, on a lake, a very calm, no motor type lake, and it's like glass smooth, and all of a sudden, just out of the clear blue, you'll see these riffles, almost like it's a wind or a breeze going across. That is not a wind or a breeze. Those are a feeding fish up on top, and almost always you'll see uh, you know, explosions within those um, riffles that you're seeing, and that's because there's some largemouth bass chasing, or even creek or river fish, if it's big enough and, and you can do that, or they do that. Um, but I'll kind of push on this for a minute or two, a couple of times, just to make sure. I'll, I'll go up and down and, and then side to side, and then once it's into place, um, you're done. So that's um, that's the streeper right there, and you can see how by having that material splay out this way, 
makes a really nice uh, transition between here and back there. Now, you can, and I do, is I'll grab the hook back here like this and then hold it, extend it like that so that I can take my scissors if I want to and then just put a nice, nicer taper on it. to help it blend into that uh, other crystal chenille in, in the back, in the back there. So there, there, there it is right there. And it just gives it a real nice profile. And trust me, the fish absolutely love, love, love these things. Now, <clears throat> I'm not gonna collar this. Uh, you can see how I collar them on some of the other videos that I have on my channel. But anyway, there you go. That's the streeper. Uh, that is a dynamite smallmouth fly. I absolutely love these things. Uh, I believe that if you tie some up and you take them out and you give them a try, you're going to love them too. Um, this fly is about, if you count the, um, if you count the uh, silicone legs, it's almost five inches. Almost a five, five inch fly. Uh, just from the bend of the hook to um, just past the bend of the hook where you've got the um, uh, cactus hackle, this crystal crack cactus hackle, it's about three and three quarters of an inch long. Um, Superfly, there it is. Uh, hope you got something out of this. Uh, if you did, I've got more on the way. I know I've said I'm going to be doing videos over the last two or three years, but I've, you know, just finally this year I. Uh, even though I retired two years ago, I seem to be working more than I had been. So now I'm going to be into doing uh, more video. And if you liked it, hopefully you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's also the Frugal Fly Rotter. And um, yeah, uh, let me know. Let me see your streeper. Let me see what you put together uh, when you go out and, and believe me these things will probably do really well with uh, some browns too you guys that do uh, trout fishing you go after those big browns those big browns will eat these things up I'll guarantee it um, not because I have experience at it but just because some of the trout guys and a couple of the clubs I belong to tell me that those would also be good uh, brown uh, trout flies anyway this is Mike until the next video we'll catch you later